So after last week's absolutely unabashed, terrible episode three of The Acolyte, listen, on, on one side, I'm happy to say that episode four is a lot better. But I would also argue that we are seriously grading on a curve here. Because, I mean, it was so bad last week that to say this is a lot better still doesn't mean that it's good. And that's what I'm going to tap onto now. I've, for the last few weeks, discussed the politics, the Disney agenda, or perceived Disney agenda. I'm not going to continue to exist in this stupid, hate-filled echo chamber that weird corners of the internet continue to want to populate. I just want to talk about what was wrong with this episode narratively. That's it. We're not going any deeper than that. And you know what? The, 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 the one word that I think perfectly sums up what's wrong with this episode, conveniences, plot conveniences to be specific, because every single time, the, the, the essence of interesting drama is, is conflict, be that emotional, be that physical, be that whatever. Conflict is at the core of everything when it comes to engaging drama in film and in everything, ultimately. And it just seemed that the show was afraid to portray or delve into any conflict. Anytime there was a glimmer of even the slightest bit of conflict, the show instantly made, the showrunners instantly decided that, no, we're going to resolve that, like, now. Case in point, and I have to go into some... <sighs> To call them spoilers would be a bit of a stretch, but these are, I guess, things that happen. So if you haven't seen them, I guess they're spoilers, but they're, they're really not big deals here. So Osha decides to leave at the beginning of the episode and not say goodbye to Master Soul. The next scene, we find out that Master Soul needs Osha and needs to use Osha to get to what the hell's her sister called again i don't remember i i'm losing interest in the show moment by moment and then we come to the next scene and master soul says i need you to stay and having already said that she's going to leave osha's like okay oh that's it arrive on the planet where Wookiee Jedi Boy is. Now, I maintain that I wanted to see a Jedi Master Wookiee. That's been stripped right away from me. We're not getting much Jedi Master Wookiee in this, sadly. Um, we're told that he's in this highly hostile forest, and it's hard to find him. <laughs> Wouldn't you know, the Jedi have brought a Master Tracker, and the village where they land just so happens to have a piece of Wookiee clothing that Master Kanaka left, Master Jedi Master Wookiee left years ago. So, the tracker, whom we have never seen, and this convenient little piece of Wookiee attire, put them together, hey, plot is resolved. It's just, it's so forced and random, it, it, it's actually quite painful. Um... <laughs> This is one of the shorter episodes, it, and it, listen, it, it ends with all of the Jedi's drawing their lightsabers because Darth something chooses to appear at the end of this episode, but just as he starts to do stuff, episode ends. Now, I believe that this episode next week is not going to pick up here. They're all going to wake up, and Darth something is going to be nowhere to be seen, and... I have some theories as to who Darth something might be. Um, just, I'm going to, this is really bad, but I actually really do need to find out what the hell this sister is called. Because that Asian chap she's walking around with, Kimir, I think he's called. This is doing my head and I should be better prepared. I'm sorry. May. May. God damn it. Yeah. May. Walking around with this Asian chap called Kimir, I believe he's called. Two of them walking around. I kind of think he's the je I kind of think he he's Darth something, and if that's the way it plays out, that would suck, because he's not scary or intimidating at all. The other theory I have, and this would at least explain why on the episode last week we had to do the power of one, the power of two, the power of many. 
and bring in the damn witches. Now, I wasn't against the witches. There have been witches in Star Wars lore, both extended universe and gaming and some canon for quite some time now. So introducing witches wasn't a new concept, but it felt like such a weird, why are we going this way when we have a story here? If one of the mother witches turns out to be Darth something, then I suppose that validates the last episode. Doesn't make it good. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I'm not excusing it for the for the stupidness we got last week. But at least it would explain why narratively we decided to go down the route of showing the witches if we're going to bring it full circle and say, hey, presto, the witch, one of the witches is Darth something. Okay, cool. What they did show is that Darth something is powerful because he just disposed of all the Jedi with one little move. He, she, they, I don't know at this point who Darth something is. Could be a witch, could be Kimi. I'm still... Uh, I'm still going down the the idea that it's Kimir and they're going to pull a swipety do on us and I think most people with a brain will have seen it coming. Um, if it does turn out to actually be someone interesting from Star Wars canon, I guess that might revive the show a bit, but I, I don't know, man. I'm I'm more satisfied than I was last week, but that's not saying much. Am I any more excited to see episode five that's coming next week? Nah, <laughs> nah. I, I I'm in it for the for the long game now, so I will cover that. But I ain't excited about it, man. It is what it is. Subscribe button there. Another video up there. After watching House of the Dragon yesterday, which is the video here, this really hurt. This was such a step down in my entertainment quality. But hey ho, I'm watching it, so hopefully you guys don't have to. But equally, if you want to go and make your own opinion up about it, please, by all means, go for it. Do so. I'm Nico Lero, and I'll see you guys next week for more of The Acolyte. Bye for now, everyone.